Hello, ladies and gents. Um, for our next assignment, we're going to be talking about centangles. Last week, we talked about linear and organic lines um, and creating them into patterns. This was pretty much setting us up for our centangle project. Now that everybody has access to Photoshop, or if you don't have access to Photoshop, you at least have an alternative program that you can use, we are going to be creating digital centangles. But how can we create a centangle if we don't know what they are? So I will show you. What is a zentangle? A zentangle is a non-representational drawing of repetitive patterns in a defined space. Non-representational means that it does not depict anything from the real world. So you won't see any people, smiley faces, no emojis, landscapes, animals, anything that you can think of, hearts, stars, those are things that are recognizable. You wanna stay away from those ideas. Usually non-representational artwork is depicting of shapes, colors, lines, thinking of the elements of art. It can also express things that are not visible, so our emotions or feelings. So last week you learned that linear and organic lines can also have feelings. So if you had a thick, bold line with acute angles, that's gonna give you this idea of danger or anger, um, especially if the line is more um, arrhythmic where it's uncontrollable, that's gonna give you a sign of like anger. Or if you had a line that was more uh, swirly and wavy, it's gonna give you this idea of uh, calmness and relaxation. Now, what is the difference between a zentangle and a doodle? Um, one, a zentangle has deliberate marks. They're repetitive patterns that are more structured, so they're rhythmic. You can kind of see what's gonna happen next. Usually they are black and white. Occasionally you will see zentangles in color, but for the most part they are in black and white. A doodle on the other hand is almost a complete opposite. The lines are random, they're uncontrolled, arrhythmic, and usually they're ideas from our subconscious. So think of places of when you have doodled. When you've doodled, for myself anyway, I've done it during lectures, which you may be doing that right now, when I'm on the phone. I'll be just drawing some any idea that really comes to mind. Sometimes I'm just drawing like flowers or things like that. But most of the time when you're doodling, it's not purposeful. You're not focused on it. Your attention is directed elsewhere. There are three parts to a zentangle. Uh, the first part that is the most important is the defined space. The defined space for this one is this tile that goes all the way around, okay, this rectangle here. Um, that's your defined space. In order to create that space into a zentangle, you need to add strings, which can be straight lines, wavy lines that go across that space to make them into smaller sections. Uh, you can have as many or as little as you want. Zentangles, that's where it's very flexible. A tangle is the pattern that's within each of the sections. Uh, so that's kind of where it gets its name, zentangle, because you're focused on creating patterns within these sections. So here are some examples of organic zentangles. Just because we talked about organic lines, you are going to need to know how to add organic and linear geometric designs into your zentangle. So here are some examples that you can reflect back onto later. Like I said, it is non-representational. However, some of these are gonna remind us of certain things that we could find in nature. Um, it's just gonna give us that impression, but we're not trying to replicate something that we see. I want you to keep that in mind. It's not trying to replicate something, it's creating your own original design. Here are some linear zentangles. Okay, these are the more geometric, more straight edges, think more man-made. Um, this one is still considered a linear design. Okay, remember circles are considered geometric and they are man-made designs. So you can keep that in mind. When you're creating um, our project, which I haven't introduced yet, but I want you to you know, kind of reflect on everything we've talked about so far, is that variety and unity, unity are going to be um, part of your um, requirements. So variety, geometric versus organic, we already talked about that. Remember, organic nature made, geometric uh, man made. Think simple versus complex. You wanna have some simple areas or more complex areas. And think of the change of your line directions. Um, so you can look in this pattern that we have here as an example. You got lines that are going on dia diagonals, they're going perpendicular, they're curved, they're straight. They're kind of doing many different things. So you wanna make sure 
that when you, we create our circles and tangle is that you are going to create your lines in different directions. The unity is going to be black and white throughout. And you want to make sure that your lines and patterns are deliberate. Okay, you don't want to just create swirly lines that are overlapping one another and it become, looks like a big knot of string. That is something that you don't want. So make sure when you're creating your patterns that they, they are purposeful. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you take a moment looking at this image here and I'm going to have you find what the varieties are within this um, image and what unifies it all together. All right, and after you're done doing that, we are going to go into the requirements for our project and how you can get started.